So today we're going to keep practicing using slope intercept form. Um, the first couple problems here, they've given you the graph and you have to write the equation. So we always start with y. So you can all ahead, go ahead and start with the y. First thing we have to do is find the slope. So if you think about this, we've got the point here and the point here. We're going to use those. We're going to travel down to, oh, down is a negative, so it's negative two, and then to the right we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's negative two-sixths. I don't know if you can read that as a six, I'll try again. And then where does it cross the y-intercept? That's at negative one, so it's minus one, but we're really not done there because negative two-sixths can be reduced. So this really should read y equals negative one third minus one. And that should be your final answer here. In the second one, if you notice, the graph is going up to the right, so there must be a positive slope. Right, Ashley Boyd? So we're going to start at the y-intercept. We're going to count up because this is going up. One, two, three, four five, six, so we're going up six, so it's a positive. To the right, we're going to go one. Ooh, six over one. We put our x in, and then we find our y-intercept, and it's negative one, two, three, so it should be minus three. If I were to write this a little bit nicer so you can really read it, I know six over one is the same as six, x, minus three. Now, special case over here, they're giving us the equation. Did you notice what's missing? What's missing is the y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept here? It's zero. I'm going to scroll down, so make sure that you have this copied, Troy, before I scroll down. So pause the video if you must. Okay, and then sometimes they give you the equation and you have to just graph the equation. So in the past two problems, we had the graph we put into an equation. Now we have the equation we have to put into the graph. All, both are pretty easy. I think you know that by now. Remember where we start. Preston was really good about telling me where we start every time. We start at four. One, two, three, four. Make your point there. That's where we start. Now, this is the part that gets a little bit tricky. This is negative x. Well, negative x doesn't have a number in front of it. It doesn't have a coefficient, except we all know that it's 1. In this case, it's negative 1. So that means the slope, I'm going to write it over here so you can see, is negative 1. And I want to write that as a fraction, so it's negative 1 over 1. And we know the top number is the rise. Oops, rise. The bottom is the run. Oh gosh, I forgot the R. But because it's negative, we're not going to rise. We're going to go down. So we're going to go down one over one. That's my next point. Down one over one. Down one over one. Oops, missed that point a little bit. Down one over one. And then we connect them. Okay, Samantha, I hope you put some arrows on the end of yours. I know you don't always like to. Now, the, the equation is here, but we really should write it on the line, just like with your stained glass window. y equals negative x plus 4. Awesome. Move on to the next one. If you look at that one, oh, no, look at that one. It's... What's different about this one? It doesn't look like it's in slope-intercept form. So I have to take this 1 and move it away from my y. I need to get y alone. The only way I can move it over is by doing the opposite. So I'm going to subtract it here. And the only way I can do that is by doing the same thing to both sides. So I have y equals 1 fourth x. And remember, I'm subtracting 1. So where do we start again? Kyle, you always know we start at negative 1. We start at the y-intercept. 
Now, the first number on top is our rise. So we know we're going to go up and we're going to go to the right four. So I'm going to count up one and to the right four. One, two, three, four. There's my point. All right, well, let's practice doing it the opposite. If I was going up and to the right, if I want to do the opposite way and go left, I must move down. So now I'm going to go down one over to the four, over to the left four. One, two, three, four. And now I have three points. Makes it a lot more accurate to graph, especially if you have a straight edge like I wish I had. And there's our point. There's our line. So we have y plus one equals one fourth x. Okay, I want to remind you of something else. Do you remember in class when we were working on our stained glass? We said, oh, what do we do here if it says y equals 4? Well, where does y equal 4? It equals 4 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our 4. And remember, it's through this point. So it's it doesn't have a slope. So if it doesn't have a slope, it's a flat line because the slope is 0. Remember the slope, dude. It's 0 fun. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay, now we get into some crazy ones. If you notice down here for letter A, definitely not in slope-intercept form. So we need to get Y alone. The way we get Y alone is by moving the X's first. We move the X's by subtract. We do the opposite. We do the additive inverse. We want to zero them out. So we're going to add 2X to both sides. Well, when I add 2x to both sides, I'm not really adding them together because they're not like terms. Now I have 4y. I did not do anything to the 4y. Now I have 2x on this side because I just moved my 2x's over, and I'm adding 8, but I'm still not done. I have 4y. I'm just rewriting it because I've run out of space. Equals 2x plus 8. And look at this. I know I'm multiplying the four or the y by four, so I have to divide everything by four so I can get that out of there. I'm dividing every term here by four, every single term. Four divided by four is one, so I have a y. Now, two over four is really the same as one half, so we have one half x. And we know eight divided by four is two, okay? Now in B, we have a similar problem. I'm going to just change my colored pen so that you can see it a little bit better. I need to get Y alone. So let me rewrite this as Y minus X. All that I'm doing is switching the sides equals 7. All I need to do is move the X out of there. So I'm going to add X to both sides. And Y equals seven, oh dear, seven plus x, or really I should have written it the other way, y equals x plus seven. Now that's in slope-intercept form. Don't forget, the reason we need it in slope-intercept form is so that we can graph it. That's the only reason. I'm going to let you do C um, and D by yourselves. But in the meantime, let's practice with this extra work over here. Okay, so I need to move the 5 over by subtracting it on both sides. By the way, we have to get really good at this because next week we're going to be working with two equations at once. So if we have a hard time with this, we're going to have a hard time next week. So really focus on trying to learn how to do this. Now I have 6x minus 5. I still need to divide everything by 3. I don't know if you can see this. I'm hoping you can. So 3 divided by 3 is y. I'm going to just write it over here because I've run out of space. 6x divided by 3 is 2x. And negative 5 thirds is my y-intercept. Okay, I'm going to pause the video right now. We'll have to do the other two as a do now because this is taking way too long. Good luck.